Why did soldiers in World War II not fasten their chin straps? It's certainly a common sight in Hollywood World War II productions, but this is also backed up by historic footage, including training footage dating through to the Vietnam War. I hustled out into the bay. They gave me a grenade and I held on tight. I pulled the pin with a little strain, cocked my arm, threw it, and look out! But in modern times, and for the foreseeable future, there's no question, chin straps and helmets are a big deal. However, World War II helmet safety was less universal, and sometimes the victim of rumor, the most famous being that a helmet strap might snap your neck. A soldier also might be more willing to listen to this rumor if they also felt not wearing a chin strap was more comfortable. The hot air is blowing, a rumor is growing. Helmets were important in World War II, though they were rarely effective against direct fire. Around 60% of casualties during the war from all sides were from mortar or artillery fire, which could rain shrapnel onto one's head. The M1 seen worn in US World War II movies was developed in 1941 specifically to help protect against shrapnel, with more protection for the back and sides of the head. 22 million of these helmets were made during World War II alone. The M1 in World War II had a good lining system with an inner hard hat shell. They were more comfortable compared to the previous generation of helmet. Soldiers used M1 helmets in a number of unendorsed and creative ways during the war. But was this neck snapping rumor valid to keep a chin strap unfastened? The rumor was that a blast from an explosion could pop a man's helmet and head back, snapping their neck. This was in fact officially documented as a concern. A scene from Patton from 1970, where General Patton confronts a doctor over his helmet, was in part true to history. Patton confronted a physician, Lieutenant Needleman, over his chin strap during the war. Needleman debated with Patton that this could break a soldier's neck, using his position as a doctor to validate his likely preference not to wear his chin strap. Get those yellow bellies out of here, today. Needleman was not alone in supporting this rumor. A Lieutenant Colonel Ward in Tunisia made recommendations for helmets to be unbuckled during action, due to a man seemingly having his neck broken in a blast, where he had his helmet buckled. He was with three other men, their helmets unbuckled, who were unhurt. This would be proven a biased observation, but despite this, it was reinforced by genuine orders not to fasten helmets under the chin. Men who were instructed not to fasten their chin straps were instructed to buckle them around the rear of the helmet and not let them hang loose as so often seen on TV. Hollywood tends to exaggerate helmets and straps not being worn to easily identify actors who might be the focus of certain scenes. Eventually this rumor was officially disproven by the weapons board in April of 1944. Despite this, the weapons board did take the psychological effect of this rumor seriously and ordered quick-release straps to be issued for each helmet, which would break at a low threshold of force. Well, that makes no sense at all. That was just military psychology. In reality, if an artillery blast was strong enough to break your neck by means of your helmet, the shock effect would likely kill you either way. One such issue did remain, however. If a blast knocked you unconscious, it is possible that a chin strap could strangulate you, depending on how you landed. This was a documented occurrence, and was more common if using the leather strap from the helmet liner. Chin straps were also believed to be a liability in hand-to-hand -hand combat, primarily if attacked from behind. They were also not popular during amphibious landings, particularly while climbing down cargo nets, as if you fell from a decent height, the water pushing the helmet up could choke you or hurt your neck. So it's a nice touch in some movies to see men fastening their helmets once they're down the cargo nets and on the landing craft. What the hell are you wearing that shit for? Just gonna dehydrate your ass, not do you any good. During the Vietnam War, soldiers again rarely strapped their helmets in the hot, humid conditions. It was typically acceptable to buckle the strap around the back of the helmet. If the internal webbing is adjusted properly and it's worn long enough, it should stay on about as well as a fitted baseball cap. 
I mean, I got a bad feeling. I don't think I'm going to make it out of here. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on the M1 helmet and the helmet strap rumor. I hope to see you in the next one. I pulled the pin with a little strain, cocked my arm, threw it, and look out!